sustainability is not all about doing less harm but it's all about doing more good that is the concept of the sustainability with this word i would like to welcome all of you in this auspicious the first edition of the sdg international collaborative program that we are going to host on behalf of the model school i would like to welcome our honorable principal as the chief guest respected vice principal mr a m sharif all other dignitaries are present here from the model school and i would like to welcome very warmly and wholeheartedly to all the collaborative schools those who have shown their interest to take part into this uh, auspicious occasions called as sdg that means the sustainable development goals to be achieved by given a timeline un 2030 so it's a very high time for all of us that we need to do something good to attain those goal for the sake of our society and for our mother earth to start with this we'll be observing a silent prayer for a few moments after that we'll be starting our program thank you thank you very much now i would like to introduce our most esteemed participative schools those who have shown their interest and the intention to be a collaborative state to cater or to share the more information regarding all the 17 goals suggested and fixed by un in 2015 we have the first new india model school sharja we have the oxford school from kollam kerala india we have another branch of oxford school from calicut india then we have bal bharti school bahadurgarh haryana india then we have oasis international school from alen on behalf of the model school as the host i'd like to welcome you all wholeheartedly and i'm really thrilled and excited to conduct this program for the first time and a big clap for all of those participative schools welcome you all the dignitaries the principals and the coordinators from those participative schools i hope that will be having a very productive time in sharing the knowledges as we know that this is the first edition so being the host and the initiative of this program the participations of the uh, uh, ambassadors of the sdg council students there of the model school they will be presenting uh, by their own uh, like showing the caliber and the potentiality and hope that it will be continued for our next program by some other school now i would like to invite our chief guest our principal dr abdul kadir vivi to facilitate and to inaugurate this program with your gracious words over to you sir thank you good morning respected vice principal the coordinators mr dibendu principals and teachers of the participating schools 
staff and students of the New Indian Model School, Sharjah, the Oxford School, Kollam, the Oxford School, Calicut, Balbharadi School, Haryana, Vyas Internet School, Alain, and the Model School, Abu Dhabi. Everyone should have a place to sleep at every night and a space to call theirs. Everyone should have a chance to be the best they can be and to reach their fullest potential. We have to look at the beautiful things that the world does offer us and hope that one day we'll be able to see happiness in every face, that the world will be a less stressful place for everyone and that we can all live in peace and harmony. Hence, the Sustainable Development Goals, also known as the SDGs or Global Goals, were adopted by the United Nations in 2015 as a universal call to action to end poverty, protect the planet, and ensure that by 2030, all people enjoy peace and prosperity. The SDGs aim to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all. They address the global challenges we face, including poverty, inequality, climate change, environmental degradation, and want to have peace and justice. They are, the SDGs are a collection of 17 interlinked global goals designed to be a blueprint to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all. A world without poverty, without hunger, with good health and well-being, with gender equality, with clean water and sanitation, with affordable and clean energy, with decent work and economic growth, with industry, innovation and infrastructure, with reduced inequality, with sustainable cities and communities, with responsible conception and production, with climate action, with peace and justice. The UAE National Committee on SDG was formed to implement the SDGs. Peace, happiness and justice are not something that happens to us. They are something that we create. Achieving the goals will be impossible without the participation and cooperation of everyone. Everyone has to play, play his own role. The whole world is striving for a better world and the schools are on incorporating it in the school curriculum. Students and teachers have to play a vital role for its implementation in schools. Hence, we have arranged this SDG Collaboration International Program. I take the privilege of inaugurating this session. Wish you peace and happiness in your heart, in your family, and in the whole world. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. You described the whole concept in a very crispy and very to the point. Hope that all the participants, participants as the teacher and the uh, students, they must have imbibed and inculcated these ideas and they will be definitely executing in their near future. Thanks a lot. Next, I would like to call upon our respected vice principal, Mr. A.M. Sharif, to enlighten with his statements on these SDGs. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dibiyan. Good morning, all uh, respected principals, representatives of uh, different schools participating uh, in this international collaborative program, students who are uh, presenting today's program, the trainers, the mentors, as well as all the participants, a very fine morning to you all. Happy to be part of this program. 
because this has been uh, a dream of uh, the school to make programs where in students of uh, different areas different countries different cultures are uh, mixing up and uh, exchanging their values their their culture their identity their thinking etc as honorable principal kanvi the sdg program has been set up by the united nations in the year 2015 and expected to be completed by 2030 you know all the member nations of united nations have taken up this challenge and uh, in 193 nations the different goals are taken up and the success level is different as you know the different uh, physical social and economic conditions are different in the world in various countries so the success is also different moreover the determination as well as the cooperation of the different entities in a country also play a major role in bringing success to achieve the sustainable goals you know in india also we have planning commission we had planning commission now it is called as niti ayog under niti ayog all the sdg programs are taken up and uh, we are in the uh, path of success as well now the question comes why the sdg programs the sdg are the global goals are uh, international and the countries are taking up the governments are taking up what is the role of the students why is this uh, taken up in the schools the answer is very obvious as we expect to make the overall development of uh, the children to amplify the skills and talents programs like uh, sdgs emun model united nations ted talk etc had proven the importance in the skill development that's why we are participating on such programs you know by participating in sdg students need to uh, learn about the world they learn about the world the surroundings the issues problems students uh, will be participating in the world they live in the different programs they grow empathy uh, as well as compassion students and teachers are uh, inspired by different actions so the benefits are are, are many so the model school abu dhabi has introduced the sdg program across the school through various clubs and uh, uh, thought of uh, collaborating the programs with the uh, similar minded schools for the children to get more exposure as a conveyed in the beginning and uh, having understanding as well as to share the best practices we have invited uh, some of the schools um uh, who are similar minded and uh, we are uh, very much thankful and we are very much happy as well because now six schools are participating in the program uh we had uh, discussions with the school representatives and uh, principals of uh, these schools and we have the, we have decided to undertake the program collaboratively on a monthly basis so this is the first program in this series the next program shall be on 13th of november saturday and uh, uh, today two schools will be presenting the programs that is a uh, model school abu dhabi as well as uh, post for school kolam and in the coming 
programs all schools will be presenting one or two programs as we decide in the forthcoming uh, sessions expecting the cooperation from all for the benefit of the children thank you all i wish you all the best thank you very much thank you very much sir for your a deep vertical explanation about the sdgs structure their objective and how we can implement it in our daily life to achieve a great society with achieving these goals in near future because we know the students are the future creator maker of this mother earth and to take care of the environment thank you so very much sir for your statements again i would like to welcome and would like to say thanks to all our participants as a school collaborative program so the partners of all our collaborative international sdg program as they have shown their consent and their what i can say that uh, a kind of passion that to make a collaborative program and to uh, be a very responsible world citizen so to do the honor i'd like to call upon the vice principal of bal bharti public school, school bahadurgar haryana mrs sumalata to enlighten with her statements over to you ma'am my warm greetings to everyone hope i am audible hello yes ma'am am i audible sir because i was facing some network issue that's why i just want to ask no it's loud and clear ma'am all right so my warm greetings to all it's my greatest pleasure to attend this sdg collaboration program being organized by the model private school at abu dhabi i would also like to extend my heartfelt thanks to mr debendu karfa for the invitation it's indeed a commendable endeavor which aligns with providing a better quality of life for the present and future generations because future generations are our children and they have to take it up i am sure our efforts now will reap the fruits in the times to come so thank you once again and i on behalf of my institution is really looking forward for this program and it is really really a great thing thank you very much thank, thank you, you so very much ma'am welcome sir we feel really very excited and honored that same here sir participation would have not yes, been sir. possible means the program would not have been possible if your gracious presence were not being done yes, so we yes. would like to uh, convey our gratitude to all of the participants all the participant schools okay thank you very so, much sir thank you thank you very much ma'am thank you very much now we know that the students are very energetic they are very much enthusiastic so now the students are having lot of creativity and they have some good suggestions for this 21st century they are literally the digital era generation we must get something from them and still we are also learning from them because they are involved in this digital and 21st century era so now it is at their time that they will be presenting some of the goals from the different sections of the model school so to start with the first program i would like to call upon miss angelin sara shibu of grade 5o to share her thoughts on a particular goal
it took me a surprise to know in some areas of Ethiopia, parents delay picking up names for their new babies by a month or more. Why delay? Why not take advantage of this and have a ceremony? Well, they delay because they are afraid. They are afraid that their baby will die. But how can it be? 2.6 million babies die around the world before they're even a month old. There are more than 1.4 million pregnant women who are infected with HIV. Do you think the world is going to be a better place within a year? In the next decade? Do you think we will have no poverty, no hunger, and no gender inequality? Or in the next 10 years? According to the governments of the world, yes, we can. That's where the SDGs come into the picture. A very warm good morning to all the dignitaries of Yavadia. This is me, Angel and Sarah, representing the Model School Abu Dhabi. The SD goals were adopted by the United Nations to end poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, and so on. Today, I would like to focus on goal three, good health and well-being. The official wording is to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. Mahatma Gandhi said this once, it is health that is real wealth and not pieces of gold and silver. And wellness is the act of practicing healthy habits daily to attain better physical and mental health results so that instead of surviving, you're thriving. Next, I would like to discuss which are the healthy countries and unhealthy countries and the reasons for the same. First, let's see which is the healthiest country and their reasons. As per the report, Spain is the healthiest country in the world. Spain is one of the few countries that have a Mediterranean diet. And because of this, Spanish people suffer from fewer diseases compared to the rest of the world. And the unhealthiest country in the world is the Czech Republic. And the reason is because each person drinks 13.7 liters of alcohol per year on average. Now, let's find out the leading causes of death. As per the graph shown here, at a global level, seven out of the 10 leading causes of death in 2019 were non-communicable diseases. People living in a low-income country are far more likely to die of a communicable disease than a non-communicable disease. These figures have opened the eyes of the UN-associated government, which led to the development of SDGs. The UN has defined 13 targets and 28 indicators as part of SDG 3. The targets of SDG 3 cover and focus on various aspects of healthy life and healthy lifestyle. Targets specify the goals and indicators represent the metrics by which the world aims to track whether these targets are achieved or not. The 13 targets are reduce maternal mortality and all preventable deaths under the age of five, fight communicable diseases, reduce mortality from non-communicable diseases and promote mental health, prevent and treat substance abuse, reduce road injuries and deaths, universal access to sexual and reproductive care, family planning and education, achieve universal health coverage, reduce illness and death from hazardous chemicals and pollutions, implement the WHO Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, support research, development and emotional access to affordable, uh, to affordable vaccines and medicines, Increase health financing and support health workforce in developing countries. And the last one is improve early warning methods for global health risks. Do you think we will be able to achieve these goals by 2030? Yes, but there are some challenges and achievements. The following are the challenges. Worldwide reduction in funding, poor sectorial coordination, sustainability confirmed to one country or region, worldwide distribution of vaccine, and one of the greatest challenge is the impact of COVID-19. 
Due to the COVID-19 scenario, the number of people living in extreme poverty could increase by 44 million in 2030. And last, non-COVID-19 diseases have been neither neglected nor interrupted. Even though there are challenges, as part of SD goals, public health has been improved. The achievements are huge reduction in child mortality, vaccines for preventable diseases, access to safe water, prevention and control of HIV and malaria, and tobacco control. Is UAE a part of SDG? Yes, they are very much involved. UAE is aiming to create one of the best healthcare systems in the world. Now we shall see what tactics UAE has implemented as part of SDG. UAE's National Agenda 2021 is in line with SDG 3, as health is one of the six national priorities of UAE's vision. The Ministry of Health and Prevention is motivating to improve community health by providing creative healthcare services. UAE has imposed specific taxes, 100% tax on tobacco and energy drinks. Now, UAE is among the world's most vaccinated, uh, vaccinated nations with over 95% of residents fully vaccinated against the coronavirus. UAE is also facing some challenges. There are high imports of food, rise in obesity, physical inactivity, and unhealthy diet continue to be a huge challenge in the UAE. So what can you and me do today? As part of SDG, we children can work on the development of our of our nation to be more well-known citizens of, of the world and to show them how we can make a difference in the future. I would like to conclude my speech by emphasizing on the children's participation in the implementation of SDGs. Every little step supports. Inform your family, your friends, and your community about the simple actions they can take in their daily lives. Understand the importance of SDG and its impact on the future at goals related to SDG in the student calendar plan. Cultivate a healthy lifestyle and a balanced diet. Change starts with you and me. Every human on earth is part of the solution. There are some easy things that we can adopt into our, into our routines that will make a big difference. Remember, your body is the most priceless possession. Take care of it. Thank you all and have a great day. It was awesome. It was awesome. Hopefully that all of you, we are really uh, having the agreement with uh, Miss Sarah that what she described and discussed. It was her own generation of the information and the presentation. So hope that it will be very much acceptable among us. So let's have a great round of applause for her. We need this kind of creativity. We need this kind of leadership and we need this kind of interpretation of the information to put forward in front of us because we need to learn a lot till that. Thank you very much. Now go with, go ahead with the next program or the module. I would like to call upon master Abdul Hadi of 8H and master Muhammad Malik of 11th E from the boys section to present on the topic quality education. Over to both of you. Good morning to one and all present here. Me, myself, Muhammad Malik. Myself, Abdul Hadi Shar. As a part of the SDG International Collaborative Program, we will be talking about the fourth goal set up by the United Nations, quality education. So first topic is the outcomes of quality education. Let's see it one by one. The first outcome is self-reliance. So self-reliance means it enables a person to stay on his own standards. Second point is improves people's life. So when you have a quality education, it improves the standards of your living and makes your life much more easier. 
And the third one is boost economic growth by enhancing skills. This means that by quality education, our skills will be improved. And with this skill, we can boost our economic growth. And with the boost of the economic growth, there will be a better livelihood for all the people. And the third one is the policy, policy interventions of quality education. So for the first is that it improves the access and quality of one's life. And the second one, we have removing obstacles of people's life. And the third one is the put in, in food security. This means that India has, in, India has introduced a policy named as the midday meal scheme, in which they will provide one-time meal to all the students. This acts as a stimulus for all the students to attend the school. The next point is the gender equality. So when talking about the India, we can say that the government schools, they're providing education for both the boys and the girls. So this is the co-education system. So that is the policy intervention, gender equality. The next intervention is resolving armed conflict. So in India, we have the polices and we also have the forces. So these polices, they protect our community and the forces, they are on our borders. So these people, they are given well education and training. So by these, the forces and the polices, they resolve the armed conflict. And the next, we can see a comparison between the world and India. So the first, we have the global literacy rate, that is 86.2%. And when coming to the India side, we can say that 74.04% adults are literate. And in the rural areas, it is 68.91%. So surely we can say that in the urban area, the literacy rate might be 90% or above. And the next point is 55% of people with disabilities are literate. So this, so we can say that the Indian government, they do not create any inequality. They are providing quality education, even to, the, even to the people in the rural areas, as well as the people with disabilities. And coming to the global statistics, 63.67 million children remain out of school. And coming to the India, 34% children with disabilities are out of school. So the statistics, it's, it's different while comparing to global statistics and India. And coming to the enrollment of girls, 100% enrollment can be seen on girls in primary education. But coming to the higher education, 25.4% can only be seen. And India stands as the largest youth population in the world of 423 million and still counting. And coming to the gross enrollment of higher education, 25.8% can only be seen. Half of it is contributed by the girls. And coming to the youth who are literate in India, 92% are females and 96 are males. And now we can see what are the efforts captured by the Indian government to attain quality education. So for the first, we have Samagra Shiksha. It's, it consists of Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan, which means education for all. And then we have the midday meal scheme. As I've mentioned previously in the, early, previously in the slides uh, about food security, this can be said. And next we have the integrated child development service. The next we have the Pradhan, Pradhan Mandri Kaushal Vigas Yojana. That is PMKVY. So it mainly focuses on the skill based learning. And next, we have an EP 2020. The full form is National Education Plan, which emphasizes on skill based learning and support quality education. And now we can travel around the world, Finland. It, according to 2021 statistics, Finland is ranked as the number one country on the basis of education. And we can see what are the reasons behind that, that domination. So for the first, we have no standard system. This means that till eighth grade eight or nine, they won't have any uh, major tests or annual exams. Instead, they will have a grade assessment. The second point is accountability for teachers not required every time. And the next, we have cooperation, not competition. The students in Finland, they have a co co cooperative mindset in the, instead of the competitive mindset. The next point is make the basics a priority. So in Finland, the basics are given a more pr priority. And the next point is that starting school at an older age of seven years. This is being followed by the Indian government too. In Indian government school, they have given mandatory for all the children to attend the schooling at an age of six years. The next point is providing professional options past the traditional college degree. So in Finland, instead of the old traditional college degree, they provide more professional options. And the next we have fin Finns, they wake up late for a, a strenuous, a strenuous school, school days. This means that there, if their school starts at 9 a.m., it will end by 2 p.m. And if the school starts at 9.45, it will end by 2.45. This is uh, very crucial for all the students uh, around the world as it gives more sleep and they will be active during the daytime. 
The next point is consistent instruction from the same teachers. So the students in Finland, they often have the same teachers for up to six years of their education. And next, we have a more relaxed atmosphere. This means that whether they are at school or at home, they will have a, a less pressure atmosphere. The next thing is less homework and a small sort of outside work required. And next, we can see what are the local steps that can be done to achieve quality education. So for the first, we have educating the younger members of our family in a practical way. The next point, we have inculcating values and ethics in family members and schoolmates. And next, we have spreading awareness among uh, spreading awareness about education among the street children and uh, those people who can't afford schooling by giving the evening classes. And the next point is in school, you can experiment more on theory and pursue practical nitty gritty. And next, we can execute our learning as and when required to meet our goals and objectives of our daily life. The next, we must need to understand the basics of everything very deeply and then do research to get the effective results. And next, learning shall continue every bit of every bit of second of your life from various resources to put forward our life skill activities to attain the ultimate goal. And next, we can see what are the methods adopted by our school. So first, we have top quality infrastructure. We also have spacious classrooms with requisite furnitures, boards, etc. And next, we have clean and hygienic toilets, accessible drinking water, and activity and play areas for all grades. And we also have laboratories with requisite instruments and equipments. And we also have a spacious computer lab, which consists of computers for the students to learn and experiment with it. And we have good quality teacher from different places and we have good quality teaching. And our school also conducts many extracurricular activities so as to nourish the skill based, the skill of the student. And with that, we have come to the ending of our pre presentation. I wish you all a happy day. And from my side, I would like to wish the same. Thank you. Thank you. It was a wonderful presentation by both of the young chaps so we are expecting more from these creative thinkers and the future creator so hope that we'll be getting some sort of inspiration from them and we must uh, take into our considerations that what could be the local steps to put forward for the global light so that is also our tagline that you must have gone through in our flyer that global light with local steps. So we believe in the local acts to finalize and to achieve the goals globally. With this, again, I would like to convey the heartfelt gratitude to all other, all our partners, the schools. To do the honor, I'd like to call upon Mr. Sajahan the principal of NIMS Charger to enlighten us with your motivational speech. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning to all the participants, the passionate children, the dignitaries, the principals, and all the teachers. Indeed, it's a pleasure to join hands with uh, the Model School Abu Dhabi in such a noble initiative. We all are aware that uh, SDG goals, which is initiated by UN, all the 17 goals are equally important, very relevant in the modern time. And the importance of that, of course, is coming with a fraternity, a feeling of fraternity, love and affection to the fellow beings. We know that we have progressed through ages and stages. The human civilization and has undergone a lot of stages of development. All this development we could achieve through collaboration, through uh, association and sharing and care with fellow beings. And we are all uh, nothing but tenants over here on this earth. We have got the, you know, means uh, uh, a full life is given by the almighty God to enjoy the amenities of this world and this environment. And we are nothing but the tenants over here with full responsibility to return intact 
and hand over to the next generation. From that thought only, this SDG is coming in picture. Means uh, universal brotherhood of mankind. In this context, I would like to uh, remind you that we are all coming from India, a great nation, which is giving a lot of importance for universal brotherhood of mankind. And the court, which is written at the entrance of Indian parliament, Vasudeva Kudumbagam, is from Ubanishad, from, uh, uh, you know, from the prehistoric period itself. Means we used to have such a noble thought and a concept that the world is a family and uh, means all our sisters and brothers. And then, uh, you know, we have to treat, care, and, you know, share, means uh, help and support with each other. And through the collaboration only, we can develop. We know that the human beings, now we are confident enough to reach, means out of our globe. And we are, you know, means reaching into the heights of development and, uh, you know, of prosperities and all. At the same time, we should not, uh, you know, means neglect that a lot of things that we have to give the support, care, means especially, uh, means uh, the first uh, uh, child, Angeline Sara, uh, presented from uh, the model school Abu Dhabi, uh, who spoke about health and well being, health and well being, you know, which is a very important topic in the modern time, especially. We have been undergoing the pandemic situation in the modern time. Okay, uh, means uh, she has enlisted, uh, highlighted the data of the importance of the health and safety and also of the well being uh, from the context of the COVID 19 pandemic. So, which was very wonderful. And uh, also, the second presenter, um, I failed to, I don't know, I missed the name, the, both of the boys very confidently when they were speaking about the quality education that we have to, uh, you know, means uh, uh, impart. And now means because of the COVID pandemic situation, we have uh, experienced a lack of uh, continuity, uh, even though we have been following uh, the online form of teaching learning process. And there may be a learning gap. So that also we have to address. So it means uh, there are, I understand that there are six schools collaborated, uh, you know, means under the umbrella of this global light and local steps. So the caption that you gave for this itself is so wonderful, uh, means we are going beyond the geographical boundaries of uh, the countries and all, and giving the outreach to uh, the nations, means, and also means uh, giving a wonderful experience for the children who are the future of the world tomorrow, okay? So I'm not taking much time. And indeed, it's a pleasure for me to be a part of this venture. And also uh, means I ex express my gratitude to Sharif sir and all uh, the flag bearers of this program. And I ex extend my hearty appreciation to those children who presented. And also my appreciation goes to all the children who are there online were passionate, energized about this wonderful initiative, SDG. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you all. Thank you so very much for your fantastic explanation and your knowledge sharing. Yes, we are also agreed that being the Indian, we feel really proud that it's a great nation. And as a nation, it has taken a lot of initiatives to cater uh, the 1.4 or 1.5 uh, billion uh, population, and it is not a matter of joke to control and to organize them and to arrange for so many uh, things. So for that, the government of India has uh, initiated one IOG called as the Niti IOG NITI. Earlier, it was named as the Planning Commission. So later on, they have started this Niti IOG. And uh, through this Niti Ayog, they have initiated many, many things that in the last presentations, both the boys, they had given some sort of, you know, the lights that in the uh, field of education, that what are the things, especially, uh, you know, like the for youth, 
the kaushal that means the skill based education and to make them employability towards the near future because we know that uh, after acco accumulating or inculcating the education the knowledge imparting and to be very easy going with the employability situations we somehow feel the crisis situation so now the nation is working on it to uplift those sort of children and those sort of people to make them more fit for the world thank you very much sir now it's time for girl section to present their creativity and their sharing of knowledge regarding the gender equality so for that i would like to call upon ms teertha rajesh of 11th a and ms devika of 11th b the das is for both of you thank you very much a very warm good morning to all of you myself teertha rajesh and i am devika pena today we are presenting the play club of school and we are here to speak about the fifth sdg that's gender equality now this sdg aims to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls gender equality is not only a fundamental human right but an absolute foundation for a peaceful prosperous and sustainable world abita could you please enlighten us on the importance of women empowerment yes sure women and girls everywhere must have equal rights and opportunity women's equality and empowerment as one of the 17 sdgs in short all the sdgs depend on the achievement of this goal 5 In fact, UN Women acts to empower women and girls across all the programs. With step-by-step action on gender equality, every part of the world can make progress towards sustainable development by 2030. Now, Devika, can you please explain about the problems that we face because of gender bias? Sure. So there are some adverse effects for gender bias. Gender bias is undermining the social fabric and devalues all of us. It is not just a human rights issue; it is a tremendous waste of the world's human potential. By gaining women equal rights, we're actually gaining half the population a chance to live life to its fullest. Political, economic, and social equality for women will benefit all the world's citizens. Together, we can eradicate prejudice and work for equal rights and respect for all. All right. Now let's take a look at the targets of this SDG five. The first target on the list is to end discrimination against women and girls. The second one aims to end all violence against women and girls, and third one. El- and aims to eliminate forced marriages the next is value and take care and promote shared domestic responsibility and then ensure full participation leadership and decision making and also universal access to legal rights and health and rights all right now let's see the challenges that we are facing to achieve this this uh, sdg so they can you please start with the slide sure since gender inequality can still one of the history's most persistent and widespread forms of injustice Eliminating it will call for one of history's biggest movements for change. Women and girls continue to suffer discrimination and violence in every part of the world. Gaps in gender equality exist in every sector. Now, about these gaps in gender equality, some examples are given here. That is, in South Asia, only 74 girls were enrolled in primary education for every 100 boys in 1990. In 155 countries, at least one law exists that impacts women's economic opportunities. The gender pay gap costs global economy dollar one sixty trillion, and one in three women experience some form of abuse in their lifetime. Let's see what we can do to address the gender inequality. Gender inequality. The goal five aims to eliminate all forms of discrimination and violence against women in the public and private spheres, and to undertake reforms to give women equal rights to economic resources and access to ownership of property. So now, uh, we can see in this chart. The threats that this uh, gender equality, gender inequality, causes to the world. We can see here that one in three women have experienced some form of physical or sexual violence in their lifetimes, and only 65.46 percent of the women are listed as compared to 82.14 percent of men. Women hold only 11 percent of seats in the Lok Sabha, but 46 percent in Panchayati Raj institutions. And when we look into the education sector, we can see that enrollment of girls in the primary education is 100 percent, but 74.6 percent women are not yet enrolled in higher education, and it is to be noted that child sex ratio is 9.94 thousand boys, and also in job sector, 48.5 percent is the population of women, but only 27.4 percent of women are in work force. All right, now let's see some achievements of this SDG five. The first one is 
Over the past decade, the practice of child marriage has declined significantly. As a result of this progress, the child marriages of 25 million girls have been overrated. Yes, they will continue. There are 40 percent of all more women in the lower single parliamentary houses for only 20 countries in Turkey, and the local governments of only 20 countries in Turkey. Proportion achieved to the use of gender quota in most of the countries in Turkey. But it was a 19, 28.3% of ma man managerial positions are raised of 3% of these homes since 2000. Continue. There were 20 different services countries in Turkey, so national legal framework guarantees for women equal right to land ownership so that substantial improvement has been achieved in establishing equal intelligent rights, 69% and establishing spousal consent requirements for land transactions, 61%, with progress in lagging areas, including land registration, customary law, and women's representation in land governance. Empowering more women with mobile telephones has been shown to accelerate social and economic development as well. Now let's see the goal five in India and role of India in this goal five, right? So government of India has actually identified ending violence against women as a key national priority. And this resonates well with the SDG five. The prime minister's Beti Bachavo, Beti Badawa initiative aims at equal opportunity for education for girls in India. In addition, specific interventions on female employment Programs on the empowerment of adolescent girls, the Sukanya Samriti Yojana on girl child empowerment, and Janani Sadaksha Yojana for mothers advances India's commitment to gender equality. And let's see how we implements this goal five. The current plan is an update to an early strategy launched by Sheikha Fatima in 2002. It is also seen as a tool of cooperation between GWU and other competent organizations at the federal and local levels and social organizations. On 8 March 2015, Rahana Shekhar Fatima Mubarak, who is the chairwoman of the General Women's Union, GWU, and Supreme Chairwoman of the Family Development and Foundation, FPF, and also the President of the Supreme Council for Motherhood and Childhood, launched a national strategy for women empowerment of embracing women in the UAE for years 2015 2021. As per directive by His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, who is the President of UAE, embracing women must occupy 50% of the Federal Mission Council seats. On 21st July, the UN General Assembly had a virtual multi stakeholder hearing titled Accelerating the Realization of Gender Equality and the Empowerment of All Women and Girls. While this lockdown is not conducted to achievement of SDG 5, some speakers looked at the female leaders' response to COVID 19 as a good example of the strong female leadership. Women have been at the front lines in the response to COVID 19. They have played an enormous role in efforts to flatten the curve of infection and position their nations for economy recovery. Yet, the number of women in business management and leadership positions remains far too low. Women who business, who own business, are women who originate, who lead, who adapt, who create. They bring the spirit to their families and communities, often going well beyond societal expectations of the roles women should play, and they will help guide us all out of crisis and into a better future. COVID-19 is testing our common humanity and gender equality is both an imperative for building back better an opportunity to tap our full human potential. We must not return to pre-pandemic inequalities. We need bold business leadership as the world struggles to rebound from the health and economic crisis of COVID-19. But we must do more than to ensure that women are not left behind. In fact, we must let the women lead from now onwards at least. Now here's a quote by Michelle Obama that goes like this. No country can ever truly flourish if it stifles the potential of the women and deprives itself of the contributions of half its citizens. And I think this is definitely a very thought-provoking quote, which we must all give consideration to. And we all should work towards empowering women. We must help the women achieve their rights and equality. And I think all these changes begin from your home. Give respect to your mother, your child, your sister. And I think small changes can actually matter a lot because these changes help us show our respect towards women. And that will make them grow bolder and, and you know, just flap out their wings and fly, fly and achieve all the success that they deserve. We can see here that gender inequality is sure is a widespread issue, and eradicating it from the society is not an easy task at all. But if we all work together, it is possible to have a future which is free of gender bias. And together we can achieve gender equality. Let's hope so and work towards empowering all the women across the world. 
And on that positive note, we're winding up a presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, girls. It was indeed uh, a deep explanation about the goal and hope that all of us, we have learned a lot how to achieve in the near future. Thank you very much. Again, we'd like to convey our thankful gratitude to all our partners to being the collaborative in international program to do the honor. I'd like to call upon Mrs. Rohini R.C. from the Oxford Kollam to enlighten with her words to us. Over to you, ma'am. Yes, sir. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, actually, for, uh, by giving this opportunity to me, uh, that is the, um, as a part of global approach, actually, uh, I and my team, that is Oxford School Kollam, we are really honored. And in the case of today's topics, that is goal number three, four, and five, all three topics, all are relevant. And in the case of the first one, uh, by which the students started, that is about health and well-being. Actually, it is related to the pandemic situation. And the second one related to this education, that is quality education. Now, nowadays, it is a matter of concern because we are using online platforms. And the last but not the least, the third one, that is about gender equality. Actually, the two vibrant gems of new model public school. I congratulate you because you selected the topic which is relevant and add to the situation. And as I think after a series of surveys and analysis, that is you discussed about gender equality, the issues, then about the conditions, goals achieved by Indian government, then UAE, then about the women leaders and the pandemic situation, how they or the how, how they uh, face the uh, face to overcome the situation like that. So I think uh, uh, that is congratulations, kudos to all the team members. And I think that uh, today's children means you are the citizens of tomorrow. You can change the world. So do your best, change the world. That is, there is a saying, single step that cause mutation. That is single step, large mutation. That means saltation. That is when a single change occurs in the DNA sequence or base sequence, it will change the whole external appearance or internal functioning of that organism. Like that, you can change the world by each single step. So best of best wishes to all the team members from the six schools. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mrs. Rohini, uh, for your very uh, motivational uh, statements given, especially on the women empowerment. Yes. So right now we are going ahead of the gender equality and the women uh, have already proved that they are so competent and they are giving really a competition neck to neck to, the, to their male counterpart. And we hope so that we have taken so many initiatives worldwide, even our India has got the first, uh, you know, the pilot, the lady pilot, even from UAE, uh, you know, they are going to launch the first lady astronaut uh, for their uh, space program. So these are all the evidences that how we are going forward. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Now, I'd like to call upon Master Afnan Nabil from the primary section 5O. He will be sharing his knowledge and some sort of steps to guide us that how to follow the goal, one of the goals of the SDG. What to you, Master? Hello, everyone. Good morning. I am excited to wake up these days as my birthday is coming soon. But preparing for this talk today has made me a bit sad. About 6 million children around the world die, not even living to celebrate their fifth birthday, and as many mothers die during childbirth. And many are still impacted by diseases like HIV and TB, which could be prevented. But what gives me hope is the UN SDG that addresses these issues. And this hope being put into action is what I want to talk about today. My name is Afan Nabil, and I'll be representing the Model School of Abu Dhabi. 
And today I'm here to share with you my own understandings of SDG goal three, good health and well-being. As the great hypocrite said, health is the greatest of human blessings. First of all, I would like to explain to you what well-being is. Well, well-being or wellness is just an overall state of good health. And this doesn't only uh, include factors like physical or emotional health, like most people think, but it also includes several other factors like spiritual, intellectual, social, and even environmental wellness. And even if one of these are out of sync, there's really no longer a sense of well-being. Not being in good health can lead to a variety of problems all over the world, like stress, disease, and eventually, it can even lead to death. To show you how important this is, I would like to bring your attention to the next slide we have. As you can see here, irrespective of income, heart disease and stroke are very high on the list, and this is a direct link to a bad lifestyle. Take low-income countries here, for example. We can see factors like neonatal conditions and HIV are very high on the list. But when we move to high-income or even middle-income countries, we can see that this reduces a lot. And actually, the UN and the WHO have an ongoing health program targeted towards the more lifestyle problems we see in low-income countries. This slide summarizes the public health achievements of the UN together with the WHO. And this starts from reductions in child mortality and goes all the way to declining deaths from heart disease and stroke. Take the two pie charts here, for example. This shows the leading cause of death in between the 1900s and the 2000s. And we can see factors like tuberculosis and diarrhea have decreased to a state at least below global state. And this shows that they have implemented several steps throughout the years to increase global health. But what could really be the reasons for these deaths though? Well, in high income countries, we can see factors like unhealthy lifestyle, pollution, food habits, and infections are the main causes. But as in middle income countries, we can see stress and road control also play a big role. But most importantly, we can see in low income countries, the problems get a lot more basic and simple, like shortage of public health and infrastructure and lack of proper medications and medical facilities and a lot of basic problems like that. As we saw in the data in the previous slides, lifestyle change is inevitable to have good health. To have good health, you must eat healthy foods and completely avoid unhealthy or junk foods. Healthy foods are just the foods that provide your body with the nutrients it needs. And a healthy diet can protect against malnutrition in almost all its forms. And to an extent, it can even stop cancer. Now let's look on the complete opposite side of the plate. We can see that eating junk food on a regular basis can lead to an increased risk in obesity and chronic diseases. And the leading cause of global risk to health is because of an unhealthy diet or lack of physical activity. Farmers play a key role in our lifestyle. That is why the UN has prioritized this and has an entirely separate goal on this. And this just comes to show that all the goals are interlinked and connected. Another area we should focus on is fitness. And surely combining fitness with good and healthy food will increase your life expectancy and reduce your risk of dying. And having good fitness will reduce your anxiety, tension, and also depression. Let's look on the healthiest countries, starting from Spain and mostly Mediterranean countries. Let us evaluate what the reasons for this could be. The eating habits of the Mediterranean diet show us why Italy and Spain enjoy such good health. And this diet mainly consists of fruits, vegetables, fish, and whole grains. And throughout several studies, this type of diet reduces the risk of heart disease and it has many, many other numerous health benefits. Now let's look on the complete opposite side of the spectrum. We can see the unhealthiest countries starting from the Czech Republic all the way to the USA. And the primary reason for this is their bad habits like large amounts of fast food consumption and alcohol and smoking. And this type of lifestyle tends to bring out diseases like obesity and diabetes and many, many types of cancers. 
This review was important other than good food and fitness. As we discussed before, wellness has a lot of different types, like physical, spiritual, social, and occupational, and even intellectual, environmental, cultural, and also emotional wellness. And finally, I would like to share my own personal perspective. Participation of everyone is important. The WHO or the UN on their own cannot do anything if there's no support from the public. Lessons learned from COVID-19. As we learned from this recent pandemic, disease does not discriminate and neither should we. So only by coming together, we can defeat diseases like this. Get vaccinated. I highly, highly urge everyone to get vaccinated for COVID-19. And if possible, get vaccinated for other diseases also. Lifestyle change is important. As we learn from the pandemic, now we are a lot more health focused. Financial awareness. We should all be financially responsible and be sure not to waste our money on useless things that we will never use and save it up for when we might need it the most. Charity, this pandemic was hard for all of us and just imagine how it would be for poor people. So that is why charity is so, so important and we must help each other, whether it be socially, financially, or mentally, whenever it is possible. And with this, I would like to end my presentation. Thank you all. Thank you for listening. It was so amazing. It was so amazing, Master Nabil. Uh, hope that we have all got the motivation with his presentation. And uh, we vow to take all those things for our future endeavor to achieve that particular goals set by UN and for all of us, our benefits. Thank you. Thank you, Master Afnan Nabil. Now to do the honor of our one of our collaborative participants from Oasis International School, I'd like to call upon Mr. Jayasri Animan to enlighten with your speech. Thank you, ma'am. Over to you. Thank you, sir. Good morning to you all, respected dignitaries, dear teachers, and my dear beloved students. Myself, Jayashi Animon, SDG coordinator from Oasis International School, Alain. I'm very happy to be a part of SDG, an international collaborative program. We gladly accept the opportunity to work with the Abu Dhabi Model School. I'm taking this opportunity to appreciate today's Tiny stars, the children who presented their presentations in a wonderful way. They have presented some of the goals here today. We wish all the very best with this program. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. We are really honored with all of your gracious presence and to make this program a continuous one and hope that we'll be having a great success in coming future thank you ma'am thank you very much now we'd like to play a short video made by the voice section renewable energy solutions are becoming more reliable and more efficient every day our current reliance on fossil fuels is harming our planet so we have to change the way we produce and consume energy. Implementing new energy solutions as fast as possible is essential to counter climate change. To ensure access to sustainable energy, we have to take action. Get inspired here. Now let's watch a short animated video made by our friends.
It was wonderful creation by Master Aftab and his team. It was been shown as that how the UAE is taking the initiative towards adopting and adapting the renewable resources and moving towards the clean and green energy. Even India also and uh, the other countries in this world, they have also taken many initiatives. In India, we know that the trains and the train stations, they are being uh, fully operationalized by the help of the solar panel. And then the clean energy, the hydrogen, ethanol, and methanol, they are also taking part as an alternative of the biofuels. So that was a great one. We must uh, give a round of applause for uh, Master Aftab and his team for making this video. Thank you very much. Now we are at the last of this program. And to acknowledge, I would like to call upon our head of section boys, Mr. Abdul Rashid, to give the vote of thanks. Over to you, sir. Hi, everybody. Uh, good morning to one and all. I think uh, those students who are joining back from India uh, will be having a good afternoon. So we have to go inclusive of all now. Uh, the most attractive thing of uh, uh, this session is, uh, this is an international collaboration for the cause of uh, SDG. Uh, schools from uh, different uh, parts have been joined together. The 17th, uh, goal of uh, SDG series is a global partnership. I think this is a small uh, model of uh, global partnership, a tiny model of uh, global partnership. So this partnership will continue for long because SDG is uh, working for a, uh, a span a span of. Uh, uh until 2030 right nine more years have been left so i think from generation to generation this will be carried on let us hopefully uh, look forward for that and last many weeks i know our teachers and uh, uh, our students have been working behind uh, organizing such an international collaboration uh, for the sdg and now today uh, it is started rolling on right it's a grand success I uh, take this opportunity to uh, congratulate and uh, express a wholehearted thanks to one and all who associated with this, especially the schools uh, Nim Shaja, Oxford School Kollam, and o Oxford School Calicut, Balbharadi School Haryana, uh, Oasis International School Alay. I uh, take this opportunity to express wholehearted thanks to the leads and the teachers and the representatives and students of all these schools. And the thing is, uh, the, I, I hope that the session uh, went uh, uh, well rocked and nailed. Uh, excellence uh, is uh, uh, not an accident. It is actually the result of the outcome of uh, uh, high intention, sincere efforts, and uh, systematic and intelligent execution as well. Okay. Um, uh, I don't know uh, who should say thanks to whom at this occasion. Because after all, who are going to be the beneficiaries of uh, uh, this SDG mission? Everybody. See, uh, right now, 790 crores of people are dwelling on the planet. This is SDG is everyone's agenda. So who should say thanks to whom? And SDG is looking for uh, another beneficiaries who are every living and non-living things. See, life underwater, life above land, also agenda of uh, SDG series. So who should uh, say thanks to whom? You tell. And the planet Earth itself is being a beneficiary. You tell who should say thanks to whom? So let us uh, say thanks to each other. And uh, this is a global mission. And uh, our children are given a very good opportunity to learn, uh, to imbibe, 
uh, about the global happenings uh, and the needs of uh, the suffering people in uh, various perspectives. So I, uh, once again, on behalf of uh, the model school, the management, the principal and vice principal, our uh, fraternity, uh, wholeheartedly thanks to one and all, and especially special thanks to Mr. Debendu and his crews uh, for taking initiative and organizing such a marvelous session. And all those students who participated in presenting the programs. See, once we take uh, uh, a challenging task to present in a session, actually what is happening, we are shifting from a comfort zone to a risky zone. The moment when we take up a challenging task, what will start? We are disturbed. All right? This is how we evolve. So children are coming forward. They are daring to take the challenging task and uh, then getting uh, trained. Uh, they are taking a number of rehearsals. I finally, they render the program in front of the audience, the international audience. So it's a very rare opportunity, extraordinary, unusual opportunity for the students to groom themselves. So grab the opportunities. Wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to request all of you to rise for the national anthems for both the nations. See you on 13th of November. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend.